there's been so much confusion regarding the ILR. People are asking, now, now, was there an interview as part of the ILR application process? What kind of interview questions were you asked before they gave you your ILR? Other people are asking, and now, if I should reduce my contracted hours now, will it affect me in the future if I am to apply for my indefinite leave to remain? Others are asking, we realize you applied alone. Why didn't you apply with your husband? Why didn't you apply for your child? So I'm here to answer all of these questions and clarify. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome once again to my channel. My name is Anel Griselda. On this channel, I talk about nursing, migrating to the UK, opportunities for people to relocate abroad, and many other things. A life in the UK as an immigrant. So if these are things that you know interest you in any way, please do consider subscribing. Before I go ahead and answer some of these questions, let me say that I am not an immigration advisor. If you're looking for any specific solution to your problem, I would advise you contact qualified immigration advisor. Okay, this is purely based on things I have read online, and I will be showing you everything that I have read. You know, I'll be showing you the sources and then also this is based on my experience and what i know okay so do not let this replace professional immigration advice okay again let me also say that you do not want to skip any parts of this video because this video is going to be value packed i'm answering several questions that people do not understand that are bothering several people so you don't know which question is actually going to be of value to you so please do not skip and send to as many friends as possible thank you so this is as a result of me sharing my video about you know getting my ilr in the uk and everybody was excited and happy for me and there were other people who also had genuine concerns in the comment section and these are what i'll be addressing so without wasting so much time let's go to question one so this question is from someone named love adam 6370 and she says i know you came to the uk before your husband yes i did can he apply for ilr same time as you or he would get an extension to complete his five years stay in the uk before applying for his and there was a similar question as well from collins who also says congratulations now now that's your husband also had to apply separately so for each person applying for indefinitely to remain you have to make sure that you are eligible to apply you don't just apply for indefinitely to remain because your partner has applied my husband is currently a health and care worker visa dependent okay so that's the kind of visa he is on okay so to be eligible to apply for indefinitely to remain he also has to meet certain requirements this is from the gov.chk website and i'll leave links in the description it says you can include your partner and children on your application if they are eligible that's a thing you don't just apply because you are eligible they also have to be eligible it says your partner and children can apply separately at a later date for example if they are not eligible yet they can continue to extend their visas as your skilled worker or tier 2 dependent even after you get indefinite leave to remain. So now my husband would have to keep extending his visa. For instance, if what he's on is expiring tomorrow, and let's say he's only been here three years, he has to extend it. And usually it's for another three years, okay? So and when he extends it for another three years and he lives two more years on that three year extension, because he has already lived three years, he now qualifies for the five year. Period. you understand your dependents would have to keep extending their visa until they reach the five years okay before they are eligible to apply if you were settled before you got married to them it's a different thing altogether if you got your ILR before you even married now they apply to be a dependent of someone who's settled that's a different thing altogether so now eligibility for the partners your partner may qualify if all the following apply not some all one they have permission to be in the uk as your partner as a dependent on your visa so he already like for instance my husband already has a dependent visa so he takes this box they've lived in the uk with you as your dependent for at least five continuous years so he should have been living with me in the uk for this the five year period that he's you know that makes him eligible okay and your relationship is genuine so we have to prove that our relationship in the uk or our marriage is genuine we should also intend to keep living together you should have enough income to support yourselves and your dependents and partners should not be using public funds so these are and remember that once you're above 18 years you also prove your english proficiency by writing the english exam and then take the life in the uk test as well so all these are things that he would have to meet before he's eligible my husband joined me after our wedding which was 2021 so at the moment he does not qualify okay so i hope i have answered your question so now let's go to question number two i watched to the end congratulations did you write an exam or were you interviewed? What were the interview questions in yes? One also asks, Nanel, how early can one do the life in the UK test? So yes, I wrote an exam or I wrote a test. It's part of the things that you need to be eligible to apply for the indefinitely to remain. You have to have knowledge of life in the UK. No British policies, life in the UK, cultural laws, history and all that. And there's an exam called life in the UK test. And I have made a detailed video on how you can pass 
in less than 10 minutes. Even if you don't think you're writing it now, just go and save that video somewhere so that when it's time, you don't have to go through all these over 300 videos on my page struggling to find it, okay? An interview, there's absolutely no interview, okay? The only thing I did was a biometric appointment where, you know, they check all your fingerprints, but there was no interview, so I don't have any questions for you, okay? And someone is also asking, how early can you do the life in the UK test, Nanel? So even if you came to the UK today as a nurse or on any kind of visa that leads to permanent residency, you can and do your life in a UK test. So when you pass the exam, there's a reference number that they give you. You only have to make sure that you are keeping the reference number safe because five years later or two years later or three years later, when you're applying for your indefinite leave to remain, they would ask you to provide the reference number for your life in a UK test if you have passed. And if you watched my detailed video where I gave the step-by-step -step guide on how I filled my ILR application form, you will know that this was asked because I stated it in that video and I answered it in that video. I'll leave all videos and all links in the description. So yeah, you can write it. There's no expiration. You can write it very early or the day before you apply. Okay, so that's it. If you're looking to send money from the UK or other EU countries to Ghana, Nigeria or other African countries, I recommend TransferGo. So TransferGo, if you're wondering what they are, if you're a stranger on this channel, it's an international money transfer app that allows you to send money from the UK and other EU countries to over 34 different African countries. Did you hear me? To over 34 different African countries. Not loads of apps beat this. You can send money to Ghana, Nigeria and many, 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 many other African countries. If you haven't tried it, I don't know what you're waiting for with transfer go and at most 30 minutes a person is going to get the money and your person gets the exact amount that you're sending and as you send the money you can actually track the transfer to see whether the person has gotten it where it is in the you know the whole transfer process it's very very easy hassle free very very convenient and what i love about them is their customer support if you should have a problem and then you contact them they are very prompt they are very quick to respond to your query and attend to you and sort everything out for you they are authorized by the uk financial conduct authority transfer go is it's currently being used by over 5 million users worldwide. And when you check trustpilot.com, they are rated the best money transfer app. Yes, the best money transfer app on trustpilot.com. You can download TransferGo for free whether you use an Android or you use an iOS and I'll leave the link in the description, okay? The amazing, amazing thing is that TransferGo is giving unlimited £20 reward if you transfer or refer a friend. So when you use the app, you can actually generate your own referral code from the app or generate a referral link and then share it to your friends. And if these friends that you refer are able to send about a hundred pound, you know, in the first six months between two countries, you are gifted unlimited 20 pound reward. So you can imagine the more friends you invite, the more money you get. You don't have to be registered as an influencer for them or blah, blah, blah. You get the money. Okay. I love TransferGo and I recommend TransferGo to you. If you're in the UK or any EU country and you're willing to transfer money to friends and family in Ghana, Nigeria or other African countries. Okay. They are rated the best transfer company on Transpilot.com and I'm privileged to be associated with this brand. Thank you so much TransferGo for sponsoring today's video. Question three says, your child child that was born before your indefinitely this is not a question this person was actually making a statement but i'm going to clarify this person says your child that was born before your indefinitely will need to apply for citizenship before they get a passport the ones who are born after will automatically get british even before your british passport that was my case for my firstborn child. So this person is very right, okay? But the person did not go into detail, so let me explain. So there are three scenarios. Children that you came to the UK with who were not born in the UK, those that you gave birth to before you got your indefinite leave to remain, and those that you gave birth to after you got your indefinite leave to remain. The ones you gave birth to in your country before you came, and they came as your dependent, they would have to live five years here and then apply for the indefinite leave to remain. Usually because they are below 18, they do not have to write the life in the UK test, blah, blah, blah. You just apply for them when they are five years, okay? However, to any child who was born in the UK, should one of the parents or two of the parents get indefinite leave to remain or get a British passport, they automatically qualify to apply as a British citizen. And then they apply for their British passport. They have to apply to register as a British citizen, which is about 1,200 pounds as at the moment. And then later they apply for a passport, which is less than like maybe 50 pounds or something. You understand? So for those who are not born in the UK, even if you get your ILR, they also have to meet the five year eligibility requirements before they apply. But for those who were born in the UK, even if they are two months old, you would have to register them as a British citizen and then apply for their British passports. But now that I am settled already, if I should give birth tomorrow, that child automatically gets a British passport or automatically qualifies to get a British passport. So you understand, I hope this makes sense. Okay, so there are three categories of people. 
And this person is also saying that, can your kid apply for citizenship after your permanent residency or they wait till you get your citizenship? No, my kids do not have to wait till I get my passport. They can apply because I have ILR. So this says, when one or both parents of a child born in the UK are granted ILR, an application can be submitted to the home office to register the child as a British citizen without the child needing to have been granted ILR. So that child does not even need to go through the ILR process. Once the application is granted, an application can be made for a British passport for the child. Children born in the UK after one or both parents have been granted ILR are automatically British by birth and an application can be made for a British passport for the child. Okay, remember that some countries do not allow dual citizenship so they'll have to, you know, sort of like lose the other citizenship, you understand? Okay, this person was asking how long does the standard application take? Okay, so as you all know, I did the priority which is supposed to take five working days but it took four working days and I paid an amount of £3,385. Okay, but there are other services that you can go for. We have the standard service. This one is about £2,885 okay and this one you're going to get a decision within 26 weeks of submitting the form and then we have super priority this one they said you are going to get a decision by the next working day and it is 3885 per application all these figures i'll leave them on the screen is per application they start counting the day after your biometrics not when you submit the online application it is after the biometrics okay and somebody asked me that i couldn't find the question to post here but the person was asking how long the standard really takes they said you are going to get a decision within 26 weeks but this person commented in the comment section this person says congrats nanel i received my indefinitely to remain brp as well two weeks ago i did the standard service so this person did not go for priority or super priority i applied 26th august and got my decision october 23rd so august to september september to october so this person it took just about two months for the person to get a decision so although they've written 26 weeks which is about six and a half months six months as a weeks okay but this person got a response in two months okay so if you're not in a rush don't think you'll be traveling within 26 weeks because if your application hasn't been decided on if you have not received a decision yet you cannot travel so if you're in a hurry let's say you need to travel to go and get married or you're going for a funeral and you need to do this you have to make sure you're doing any of the priority services maybe super priority or priority based on the size of your pocket and um, let me also say that although they say sometimes they say six months it can take less than that a friend of mine did the super priority so it was supposed to take the next working day but right after his biometric in some few hours he got a decision so question five this person is called trish trish this person gave me a donation of two pounds i love you okay god bless you okay so this person says congratulations was that amount you paid for priority service for the whole family trish trish i wish it was it's for just to me it's for a single application thank you so much for watching bye